Hi, my name is Andrew Lauren. I'm a film and television major here at Sophia College. Hello, my name is Joseph Kim, and I'm a senior business and administration major here at PUC as well. And I'll be talking about Vincent Van Gogh's The Starry Night. Awesome. All right, before we go to, to Joseph Van Gogh, let's talk about Courbet. Now, he is a 19th century French painter, and he led the Realist movement. And it was a reaction to the, the, you know, the French Romanticists, which was a dominant French art movement during the time. So basically, it document everyday working class people and show the truthful vision of contemporary. Kind of like if you were to take a snapshot of people working at the cafeteria or at the vineyards or something in that sort. Exactly. You know, interesting thing about Courbet is that he first started out being inspired by writings, like writings from Victor Hugo, but later moved on to observe reality. So the painting we're looking at right now, it's called The Artist's Studio. It actually has a really, really long name. It's called The Artist's Studio, a real allegory summing up seven years of my artistic and moral life. What do you notice about the painting? It looks like there's a lot of things going on. Yeah, there's a lot of, it's like, there's a party going on in here. There's a lot of people. People showing up late, you know. <laughs> there's, you know, there's a naked woman. There's a little kid. I see a dog. This work is an allegory of Courbet's life as a painter. You kind of mean it's like a hidden representation of how his life really was. Yeah, he painted everybody from different walks of life. He's seen flanked by both friends and admirers of his, like art critiques and art collectors as well as everyday people, you know, masses. You have people living in poverty, those exploited, and, you know, those who make a, like a living from death. One of the, the big things that, that catches our attention is the naked lady in the middle of the painting. It seems a little bit out of context. Uh, she's holding a cloth in front of her. She's looking at Corbet as he paints. Interesting thing is that we see her, but behind the canvas, we also see somebody crucified. Yeah, it, it, it almost kind of gives it a religious aspect as well because you know the the person in the back kind of gives it like a christ-like appearance with virgin mary you know kind of looking over him while he's doing his painting exactly interesting thing you know some people call this an abstract religious work you know you see a christ is present on the dark side of the canvas while this lady she's on the foreground and she has a light on her and uh, you know she's naked and she brings this sexual charge to the painting yeah definitely the left of the painter we have, this little boy looking up to Courbet like he's, he's learning from the master. You know, it looks like he's in admiration, exactly. you know, as well as that woman, you see the slight tilting of her head, right. you know, they, they're kind of very engaged in his work. Exactly. Yeah. What's really interesting about, about Courbet as an artist is that, you know, and, and this work is that it actually got rejected. In 1855, he tried to submit it to the Exposition Universal. They were rejected because they thought it didn't portray space as well enough. Being rejected didn't dampen his spirit. He opened his own gallery to portray this painting and several others of his. It's almost like his gift to the masses. Yeah, and it seems like he kind of overcame that adversary of not being accepted and, you know, creating his own image and creating his own identity. Alright, so enough about my painting. Let's move on to yours. Well, first, I like to get started off with the artist. His name is Vincent van Gogh, and he was a post-impressionist painter of Dutch origin. Mm -hmm. And he was his work was most notable for its rough beauty, uh -huh. emotional honesty, right. and bold color. The thing about him is that he had painful anxiety and frequent bouts of mental illness, mm -hmm. which resulted in his death at age 37. So that's a really young age. Doesn't mean that his work didn't get popular. Yes, yeah, his work actually was posthumously appreciated, meaning that. No, not really many people considered him to be a great artist at the time. You know, it's a crazy thing because um, if you go online, if you go on different cafes around the world, you'd see a lot of his work. Yeah, his one work, especially the Starry Night. But before I get into that painting, mm -hmm. I'd like to talk a little bit about post-impressionism. Okay, what's post-impressionism? It's an extension of impressionism, but it's kind of rejecting its limitations, uh -huh. meaning that they continued using vivid colors, often thick applications of paint mm -hmm. and real life subject matter with you know unnatural or arbitrary color. All right, so um, talk to me about, about the painting. What's going on here? Well, in this painting, the first thing that strikes me is a night sky. Mm -hmm. and it's filled with swirling clouds, okay. stars that light up in their own luminescence exactly. and a bright crescent moon. Right, right. And, and you know, you and I could both agree that these figures are somewhat exaggerated and right. maybe something that we could all relate to. Exactly, you know, the swirl in the middle looks like a cloud with also maybe, you know, um, a Milky Way, you know, that we're part of, of this big... Right, universe. right, and I feel like the sky keeps the viewer's eyes moving exactly. within the painting, kind of giving it a sense of identity and relation. Exactly. Also, interesting thing about this picture is that there's a very large, ominous 
you know, kind of a cypress tree. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about those things. It's a, it's a massive dark structure that kind of gives it, the painting a greater sense of size and mm -hmm. isolation. The structure allows the viewer to interpret what it is. And also, you know, like there's there's depth going in. Van Gogh and it tells that this mass of cypress tree is in front of us, the village in the background, and the hills further back. Yeah. Within Western art, there are two different schools: the literal and the literary. Mm -hmm. The literal is what Van Gogh painted and what he saw, which included his hallucinations, while the literary suggests where his inspirations came from, such as a written source. And I believe that in this work, he had a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Because in the literal aspect, he was in an asylum for crazy people, and he could have easily come up with hallucinations. Exactly. From this work, Vincent Van Gogh, you know, he could kind of tell he was filled with lonely feelings and and an endless creative energy. And The Starry Night is a good representation of his troubled spirit and brilliant mind working together. But at the same time, it also makes us feel like we're part of this big, big community called the world.